hi guys um so i wanted to do a video on the idea of dictatorship um because i know it's a real theme between not just leaders of countries who distance themselves from the west but actually leaders of countries who focus on the stability and well-being of their own countries and how our press and our political leaders demonize them we can see this massively in xi jinping i mean the guy has done incredible things for china which you can see all over the internet thank goodness for social media <clears throat> and the west's response is to demonize him you know and it's almost like they've pushed china towards russia by doing this and i don't know if that was like purposeful or uh, it seems like such a weird thing to do because actually i think china would have stayed quite neutral in everything had the west not made such awful comments about Xi Jinping and suggesting that China is a dictatorship, an authoritarian. So I've been looking quite a lot into how China does things and I think it makes an awful lot of sense. Like China employs the people who are at the top of that game to run that aspect of government. So, for example, the guy in control of building railways is the best railway construction in China. You know, the guy in control of the medical side is the best doctor in Russia. Uh, sorry, in China. So you can see how, although the term dictatorship is thrown around an authoritarian is turned around what it actually means is non-populist they don't care if people act the part and are popular enough to get positions they care that they're good at their job a far cry from what we have in the uk so here in the uk for example we have Jer jeremy hunt as um the budget manager you know i know it's got a different name do apologize but like he's not really qualified to do that he's certainly not the most qualified person in britain to do that i mean when the guy read out the budget he looked like he might cry you know actually the one person who's probably in the best position for doing what he's doing is the business manager which is jacob reese mogg and of course we all scowl at him because he comes across as a pompous ass he is a pompous ass but at least he's good at business doing business things you know whereas in china they have somebody who is a great manager who runs the country and picks people who are great in their field to do the jobs of the people in the, that field populism doesn't come into it and we all seem blown away by this. Other thing that we do in the West is we tend to forget that that different cultures have got different cultural necessities in a leader. So take, for example, Saddam Hussein. Now, the West demonized Saddam Hussein possibly more than any other leader on earth. His name is still bandied about as this example of evil, you know. But actually, when you look at his policies and look at the things that he did, he actually worked really, really hard to make Iraq better. He built roads, he built, you know, sewer, sewage systems, incredible, the best that Persian countries had seen. And instead of praising that and actually looking to that for examples of how we could do better instead we demonized him and i think that that's a really important aspect of propaganda that we all kind of need to be aware of same can be said for assad Gaddafi, classic built the biggest man-made river the world had ever seen so we called him a dictator killed him you know I, it breaks my heart that we do this to these men, but I think what's really, really important to note is that the West being able to pull the red dictator card out of its pocket essentially prevents the West from having to answer to us going, hey, if there's a guy in China who can change the lives of millions and millions of people over a 20 year period and pull them out of poverty 
Why can't we in the progressive rich West do that? Where is this disjoint disjointedness coming from? So instead, they label him a dictator. They label him authoritarian. They label him as evil because that actually prevents an awful lot of people from doing any more research on the subject. Vladimir Putin, I mean, goodness me, if you just listen to the guy speak, and I often say, like, Vladimir Putin is the best Russian propaganda that there is, because listening to him makes you, like, want to be ruled by him. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The guy really has his ducks in a row. But more than that, if you look at his credentials for running Russia, master's in law, doctorate in economics, and that is really, really clear with how he's dealt with pretty much every situation he's come into. But he does it in a slow, clear, concise way. The Russia that Vladimir Putin took over in 1994 is very, very different to the Russia that he's in today. And for the better, you know? And I think that it's super important that we understand that that we can look at who this man is, what it is he's trying to do, what it is he's asking us for, and how we can move forward cohesively. But for that to happen, we have to accept that our political class are going to put pressure on us to see men who are doing a better job than them as bad people. Because if they can put that bad person onto those men, well, then they've won. Because we won't look at what they're doing right, you see. I think Xi Jinping is an amazing example of a, a decent leader of his people. I think Assad is a definite example of how even in a wartime, a man can do what's best for his people and is loved by the people of Syria. Whether you like it or not, Assad can walk through the streets of Damascus and people are just happy to see him. Do you think Rishi Sunak could do that? Xi Jinping is going to the most remote parts of China. I mean, he was, there was a video I saw where he'd taken a plane, a train and a bus for like a day to get to this remote part of China so he could make sure that people had enough to eat. The policies that he's putting in place are so important for the people of China. And it's high time that we all respected that. And the way to respect that is to stop pushing our own premeditated Western ideals onto other people. Democracy, has it ever worked? Has it ever had the chance to work? I spoke a while ago about how France has never really had the chance to become a proper democracy because they've always been in a hangover, a hangover from the French Revolution, a hangover from the Napoleonic Wars, a hangover from the First World War, a hangover from the Second World War, and then bam, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, straight into the EU. Where's the space for democracy in all of that? It doesn't exist. Is democracy nothing more than a utopian way of dismissing the benefits that can be found in other cultures. What are we going to start seeing in countries like Iran, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, when we actually stop, take a breath, remove ourselves from this arrogance, adopt some humility and look? Because I think that the answers to our problems here in the West lie in how these incredible leaders are dealing with things in the East. And I can't finish this conversation without discussing Africa. I would say the one place you can find democracy in the world in, a, in any sort of true form at the moment is in Africa. African countries have grown up, they've grown up, and I don't want to sound elitist when I say that, but these are countries that have been kept in poverty-ridden, awful conditions because of us, and they've grown up. 
And now we get these strong, beautiful African leaders who show us not just what it means to stand up for their people, not just what it means to stand up for themselves, but also how full of humility and how able they are to look at different viewpoints and accept people irrespective of where they come from, what colour they are, all of that. It's a beautiful thing to behold. And when I look at the mainstream media, I think, hey, my goodness, the things we could be discussing now, the beauty of humanity at the moment. I have never felt as happy with how humanity is going as I have in the last year. And it's because of men like Vladimir Putin. It's because of men like Xi Jinping. It's because of leaders like the leader of Ghana, the leader of Uganda. You know, these are the people who I look up to as examples of what we need to find in a leader. And all we need to do is to just stop and look 